Hi, everyone. Welcome to Smart City Institute Japan's webinar series, Global Perspective on Smart Cities. I'm your host, Taku Nagumo, Executive Director of Smart City Institute Japan. Today, we have a distinct speaker from Finland, but before inviting the, this speaker, uh, let me uh, mention some of the housekeeping matter for the audiences. So we would like to encourage all of you to make comments, questions, or messages to the speaker, to the chat box. And this is here, the thing. When you write a message to the uh, speaker, please choose all from the pull down menu so that we can sh uh, share all the message with the older audiences today. Okay, uh, that's the kind of rule of the, this program. And uh, let me uh, invite our distinct speaker, uh, Mr. Tim Roponen, General Manager of My Data Global. Hi, Tim. Hello, how are uh, you? Yeah, I'm glad to have you on this topic today. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for inviting. It's a, it's a pleasure. All right. And the theme, so today you're going to talk about my data, a, a paradigm for creating human centric digital services for smart cities. It sounds very interesting. Everyone knows about uh, my data, but uh, you know, connection to smart cities, uh, something we'd like to hear from you since it's all connected in, anyway. So, you know, uh, after your presentation, we'd like to have a discussion with you. And uh, maybe uh, audiences will give you some questions and comments. And uh, after your presentation, let's take them all and uh, discuss. Thank you. That sounds, uh, that sounds wonderful. Uh, I look forward to the, uh, to the many, 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 many questions. Uh, let me start uh, sharing. And if you can just confirm that, uh, that then you can uh, see my see my presentation right uh and then we are good to go can you yes looks beautiful okay uh, uh, hello everybody my name is tem ropponen i work as the general manager of my data global uh it's a pleasure to be here thank you very much uh to the smart city institute for inviting uh, uh, and I would like to say that, uh, that My Data Global and, and Smart City Institute have a memorandum of understanding together. So, so uh, uh, we expect to be doing a lot of uh, collaboration, not just now, but also in the, in the future. Uh, as introduced, uh, uh, I am coming uh, uh, I'm calling in from uh, Helsinki, Finland. Uh, so greetings from, uh, from the Nordics. It's a cool autumn day here. Uh, and I will talk about my data uh, and the paradigm for creating human-centric digital services. And of course, today we, we are talking specifically about smart cities. So first, let me just with very shortly say a, a word or two about my data global. Uh, so my data global uh, um, is an international nonprofit uh, headquartered in, in Helsinki, Finland, uh, founded uh, in 2018. Uh, the history of my data goes back to 2012, 2013, uh, and as a nonprofit, we were founded in, in 2018. And as our members, we have from over 50 countries, about 100 organizations and about 400 people. Uh, so it is really a, a, a kind of a global movement. Uh, and to indicate that, uh, that global movement, let me just show you, show you the map of where we, where we have uh, uh, our My Data Global chapters uh, and new ones uh, coming uh, all the time, right now 30. Uh, and you will see that in addition to, uh, to Europe, uh, we are happy to have quite a lot of uh, um, activity um, in, uh, in Asia. Uh, and in fact, uh, um, my data Japan uh, um, has been around for, uh, for a long time uh, and, and collaborating with us. Uh, perhaps uh, some of the friends from my data Japan are, are on this call. Uh, um, if so, uh, um, hi to you as well. It has been a while since, uh, since we have had a chance uh, um, to catch up. Uh, so in addition to looking at my data global, I, of course, encourage uh, Japanese friends uh, uh, to look at My Data Japan uh, for, for connections and, and, and linkages. 
Okay, let me introduce before I go to my data and some my data examples, uh, um, a few words from my perspective about, um, about smart cities. And maybe, maybe this is uh, uh, for many of you uh, known uh, or, or you have heard of these cases, uh, uh, but let's use it to set a little bit of context. Firstly, of course, we know that enormous amounts of data are gathered about each of us every single day. Uh, in, uh, enormous amounts of data is processed every, every, every day. Uh, and this logo here that you see, uh, the MyData logo represents uh, uh, um, the different types of sectors in which that data is, uh, is uh, 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 gathered and used. Uh, for example, in learning, for example, in public transport, for example, in IoT devices, and so on. So how can we make uh, the best use of that, uh, that, uh, uh, that data? Well, in, in terms of cities and personal data, we know that, uh, 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 for example, the French Data Protection Authority uh, says uh, uh, digital city services increasingly rely on the personal data. Uh, and of course, what is interesting is that it is collected and processed both uh, 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 for commercial services, but then also for for uh, 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 public uh, public services, and and you can see some uh, some some other other similar uh, um, comments. Uh, just recently, I was uh, uh, raised uh, raised to this uh, this uh, uh, um, report on on how bad use of technology can can uh, uh, actually even harm uh, our democracy and of course we would not want that to uh, that to happen um, but this is to say there are some concerns uh, even even to the way of uh, uh, all the way to uh, to human rights to to unnecessary surveillance uh, for example and sometimes that possibly leading even to uh, uh, people's freedoms being uh, uh, um, uh, affected uh, or at least the sense of freedom being being affected. Maybe we know then then examples of when when things uh, have gone wrong. Uh, for example, the famous case from Toronto, where I think some quite innovative things uh, uh, were were planned for uh, 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 in a smart city uh, um, in, in in Toronto uh, by Google. Uh, and there are quite a resistance uh, uh, um, formed because things were not being done transparently because maybe some of the governance uh, uh, was missing, maybe because uh, people were not uh, um, kept up to date and informed. It seemed like it was a, uh, a collaboration that was done perhaps behind their back. And in the end, Google had to, to cancel this, uh, this, this project. Google or its daughter company, Sidewalk Labs, um, to be specific. And at the same time, we have uh, examples, for example, in Europe, uh, for example, in Barcelona, where the approach has been a little bit different. Uh, um, it, it has been aimed at, uh, um, uh, at looking at the digital rights, looking at more of a democratic way, uh, an open way, transparent way of, of, of dealing, uh, um, uh, working together with the cities um, and the citizens or the residents of those, uh, of those cities. Those are maybe two kind of extremes and I know that uh, Toronto and Barcelona are, are often used today. Later we will talk about, uh, about Helsinki, Finland. So then Again, of course, the, the opportunities uh, uh, um, for smart cities. Well, we know that cities uh, have a huge amount of personal data about citizens, about residents, perhaps sometimes about visitors. Uh, we know that cities are responsible for, for the economic development and innovation uh, uh, um, in, in those cities uh, just before we started, we were talking about the Helsinki startup environment and how the city is trying to promote that, uh, um, for example. And then thirdly, 
uh, well, cities, um, because they are accountable to the citizens, they tend to be trusted um, by, uh, by citizens. Not everywhere, not of, uh, uh, of course not, but in general, uh, cities are, are relatively well, well trusted. Uh, and yeah, cities are, are kind of strategy coordinators, developing the, the governance and developing the ecosystem. Uh, but cities also know that they, uh, 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 they are just one uh, among thousands of cities or tens of thousands of cities uh, uh, around the world. Uh, people go from one city to other. Uh, there needs to be some interoperability in the solutions uh, um, for them to work smoothly. And yes, of course, we need uh, um, uh, uh, public-private people partnerships uh, uh, to develop these uh, these uh, uh, services to engage uh, um, communities, so that we don't get any of that kind of resistance. What happened, for example, in uh, in in Toronto? So that's uh, uh, a, a little bit of context where where I'm coming from and where we are coming from when we are talking about my data and the cities. Now, let me just, uh, just introduce uh, uh, fairly quickly what we mean by, by my data. Uh, in the introduction, uh, um, uh, you mentioned that uh, everybody knows my data. I, I, I maybe have a, have a view that there probably are people who, who don't know uh, my data on the call. Um, so uh, uh, let me let me say a few a few words and and refresh the memories. So the core idea of my data is that us every single one of us individuals should be in control of the data that is gathered about us. And for us, it's a matter of strengthening our rights, our digital rights, our human rights, for that matter. And we know at the same time that personal data needs to be used and should be used uh, to develop better, uh, better functioning, uh, uh, innovative new services, both public services as well as private services based on this personal data and based on mutual trust. So the, uh, the My Data Global Vision is a fair, sustainable and prosperous digital society through a human-centric approach to personal data. And this means exactly that. People get value from their personal data and people have a right to say and set the agenda how that personal data is used. And at the same time, organizations, whether they are public or private, the ethical use of data, uh, uh, the transparent, uh, uh, and human-centric way uh, of using data is the most attractive option. And that's, those are, of course, very big goals. Uh, and, and, and we talked about those a little bit in, in, in detail. But fundamentally, three kind of mind, mind shifts that, uh, that we think need. Uh, um, so firstly, going from formal to actionable rights, uh, which means that with one click, uh, um, we should be able to get our data, delete our data, move our data from one place to another, and so on, to exercise our rights uh, through fast one-click processes. The second mindset uh, uh, shift that we talk about is like thinking uh, not only from data protection, but also about data empowerment. So for example, combining data from multiple sources uh, to get a better understanding of my health, my finances, uh, uh, my, my uh, uh, customership, uh, um, for, uh, for example, uh, can be good. Data sharing can be good. Uh, um, I, I can be empowered through that, not only protected. And then thirdly, uh, we talk about the shift from uh, closed to open ecosystems, meaning that um, most uh, modern good services require services to, uh, or different players to work together. It is not uh, uh, done in silos uh, only. Uh, and this is similar, uh, um, of course, to the open data movement. By opening data, different actors start building uh, um, on that data in in, in creative ways. 
So these are again the, the, the three uh, fundamental shifts. Uh, and these were written actually in, uh, in 2017 in uh, what is called the My Data Declaration. It goes into a little bit of more, more detail talking about what, uh, what is needed. Um, I encourage uh, you to have a look uh, and of course sign, uh, sign the declaration if you, if you believe in it. Uh, and just to position this also, you may wonder, well, what does my data have to do with, uh, for example, the European, because we are originally from Europe, uh, um, what does this have to do with uh, the European GDPR, the General Data Protection Regulation? Well, they have a lot uh, um, to do, do with each other, but there is some differences. Uh, uh, so, so the GDPR, of course, strengthens and harmonizes uh, uh, and clarifies the way data protection is done uh, within, within the EU. Uh, and as you know, it has been uh, an inspiration to uh, some other countries as well. Um, in addition, the, the GDPR strengthens uh, the individual rights and trust uh, uh, towards data handling, uh, uh, trust that uh, things are being done in a, in a professional and ethical way. And then maybe the key difference uh, um, is, uh, is that in my data, we particularly look at how can that data also be used to enable uh, 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 new types of services. And actually there are uh, um, the GDPR uh, data portability is one, one, one key element. We would like to see some improvements still on, on GDPR and further developments, but GDPR and my data build on each other. Now, all this is of course difficult uh, and uh, we sometimes use the analogy of the bacon lettuce tomato sandwich uh, um, uh, to remind ourselves of the different perspectives uh, uh, that we have here. Uh, so we have the business, legal, technological and societal angles and no one angle, no one perspective um, is, is enough uh, um, as we, as we tackle, tackle our way forward. Uh, so my data right now uh, um, is relevant uh, in, in local, national and regional levels. Uh, we will get to Helsinki in a second. They are very active in, in, in making uh, my data happen uh, on a local level. Um, but I will also say that my data is in, uh, for example, the Finnish government uh, agenda right now, and it is in the European data strategy. Uh, and right now there are uh, uh, new European legislation coming up, uh, which is highly, highly relevant for, uh, for uh, um, my data. And us in the, in the my data community, we have been organizing, we, uh, facilitate uh, uh, a large ecosystem, a large uh, community of people and companies uh, and organize conferences. Uh, um, for example, during the Finnish EU presidency uh, was the last time we were able to physically meet. Um, of course, with, uh, with the COVID crisis, we have not now been able to do that. Uh, so in the European data strategy, my data is recognized as a movement that gives significant benefits to individuals. Uh, I will not get to, to every, every word. Uh, and in the, in the Data Governance Act, uh, particularly this role of how data is governed and how data is intermediated, that is transferred between different services um, is, is, is done. So maybe one more, one more thing I need to introduce, uh, which is the my data operator uh, concept, uh, which is maybe something has some uh, similarity to the Japanese information banks. Um, although I must admit, I don't know the information banks, uh, banks very well. Um, already in, 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 in the white papers and in the declaration, uh, uh, we talk about the different roles of the personal data ecosystem. Uh, we talk about the person, data sources, uh, data using services, 
and the operator which uh, which uh, facilitates and 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 make this data flows uh, flows happen. Uh, so in essence, the basic idea is that um, that operators connect the individual to all kinds of different data sources, for example, databases containing some information about you, uh, to then the data using services. So the services that might combine data from, from multiple places. And these operators uh, uh, make sure that this, uh, this uh, um, uh, data transfer and the data connections uh, um, are, are, and the data rights are governed uh, uh, in, a, in, in accordance to the to the my data uh, uh, principles, uh, and making sure that 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 is done in an in, in an easily understandable way from the perspective of the of the individual. Uh, the my data operator. There are many different terms. Uh, uh, you may have heard of PIMs, uh, for example, or or data trusts, or or, or these information banks, intermediaries. This is what we are what we are uh, um, effectively um, talking about. Uh, for the sake of time, I will skip uh, uh, the principles uh, um, around around this. I think those are are building on those three shifts uh, and making sure that it's, it's transparent uh, um, how data is used and that the different services have uh, have interoperability. Uh, we we have what is called the my data reference model, um, in which uh, 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 what these operators uh, do is defined. There are nine different kind of functionalities uh, of which operators can do. And last year we started uh, uh, working together more deeply with companies from around the world that are these my data operators or personal data intermediaries. Uh, and basically these, these operators are, are uh, committed to becoming interoperable to create a network of uh, operators, much like we have a network of telecom operators or a network of banks. Uh, so again, allowing for, for data to flow, uh, uh, not just within one, uh, one uh, 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 one network, but basically uh, um, in the longer term around around the world. Uh, and here we have, for example, Fujitsu Fujitsu's Personium as uh, as a Japanese example of uh, of a my data um, operator. But okay, um, that is the the uh, uh, story of 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 my data. And now I thought that let's look at um, the city of Helsinki, what, uh, uh, what they are doing um, in practice. Well, first of all, I would, I would say that right now, the topic of a human-centric approach to personal data um, is being done in many, many cities. Uh, um, uh, I, I today mentioned mainly Helsinki and Lyon, uh, uh, and I mentioned earlier the cases of Toronto and Barcelona. Of course, there are many, many other interesting cities that we keep, uh, keep an eye on. So, the city of Helsinki big function, big, big vision that they, they, they promote uh, publicly uh, is that they want to be the most functional city in the world uh, for, for companies and for individuals. Uh, and in the data strategy, they want Helsinki data to be most usable and most used city uh, uh, data by 2025. And as, as part of that, day, uh, 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 that, uh, that strategy, the city is committed to the my data principle. And they are starting now to build uh, build services, and in, in, in where city city residents can control how that data is used, both in public services at first, but also sometimes between public and private services. And this was the announcement uh, uh, about half a year ago that Helsinki made 
uh, um, that they are really uh, getting rolling with this, actually together with, uh, with three other uh, uh, Finnish cities. Uh, so I use here a few slides from uh, Mikko Rusama, who is the chief digital officer at the city of Helsinki. He was speaking at uh, one of our events, uh, and these are, are uh, um, um, some of his slides. Uh, and the key, key point is, is that how can we go from a reactive to a proactive city on citizens' terms? Uh, and, and wanting to turn the my data declaration, which I mentioned before, into a practical implementation. Uh, so for the city, what this means is uh, um, above all personalized and proactive services and recommendations. When the when the the data about the citizens is known, <clears throat> all kinds of personalizations and recommendations and tailored services can be made automated 24 seven, uh, but that of course requires trust. Uh, uh, so it requires transparency and it requires things like the AI registry where the city uh, clearly says what kind of AI solutions it is, it is using and why. And the goal is, is uh, uh, for the city of Helsinki is to save time and money. Uh, uh, and it's trying to save, uh, uh, save time and money for the city, but also for the citizens, uh, meaning a more convenient everyday life, trying to detect risks and anticipate problems early. Uh, we are working together with, uh, with Helsinki and MyData Global um, and, and, and especially the international collaboration uh, and interoperability on, on different levels are, are interesting to, to, to Helsinki so that we can show uh, a practical implementation from data exploitation to, to a human-centric use of data. So, my uh, uh, so Helsinki is starting to act as a, a my data operator uh, and it is getting some funding from the uh, Finnish uh, Ministry of Finance for this, uh, this year. Uh, and really uh, uh, understanding how can cities and municipalities use the my data principles. And it's done together with, uh, with uh, uh, Vastu, 1001 Lakes, Fujitsu and Nixu. Well, The key use case that, uh, uh, so there are a few use cases that, uh, that the Helsinki is considering. Um, and the first example of, uh, of my data is uh, uh, regarding a service for daycare fee for families. Uh, and right now this uh, uh, is a little bit cumbersome, uh, meaning that people need to fill in forms and send all kinds of documents in PDF format. Uh, and, and, and that's a little bit tricky. Uh, and what the Helsinki uh, uh, city wants to do is to digitize some of this. Uh, so some of this data is available in other data sources. Uh, so in, in, in practice in this national income registry that the tax office has uh, and, and with a human centric uh, uh, approach and with the people giving consent, um, this information can be can be uh, uh, um, automatically retrieved. So, when when uh, uh, you apply for a, a reduced daycare fee, for example, if you have a lower uh, income, uh, the city will request consent uh, uh, through the my data operator from the two parents or, or guardians. And when these parents give their consent, uh, the city will get this information from the Finnish tax authority. So from, from the national income registry. And the point is that, that some of those uh, um, uh, processes can be fastened uh, and they will reduce much less hassle, not having to send PDFs 
weeks or, or the like, but rather get that data um, immediately. Some of the other examples that, uh, that uh, the Helsinki is looking at is, is uh, uh, a verification of license information, driving license information, meaning that when you are checking uh, that is an employee uh, able to drive a, a city car that can be, that can be done, um, or even, even a, a citizen in some cases, uh, uh, if they are driving city owned vehicles, automatically uh, validate that. Uh, the verification of the citizen income uh, I mentioned about, uh, but also other, other interesting things. Uh, for example, having certificates uh, such as uh, hygiene pass, uh, um, which is what you need for restaurants to serve. How can that data be automatically uh, um, transferred from one service to another? Or how can your library uh, data uh, uh, be used to, to recommend uh, give recommendations to cultural events or activities. How can your sports related information uh, 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 be used to give you proactive health services? And finally, how can your educational data and your work history data, some courses that you have done uh, be combined into a digital CV uh, for uh, employment purposes. So these are all examples that, uh, that the city is looking at. So what these are based on is, is, is the My Data Operator functionalities. And then, then two important parts which are being built right now. Uh, which are the rule book, uh, meaning that there is a clear legal, technical and operational framework, how that data is used and processed. Uh, um, again, to lessen, lessen the, the hassle of, of, of doing the legal uh, work between different uh, organizations. So to have a kind of a common set of rules uh, uh, um, between the different players. And then this MIM4, which is a uh, uh, interoperability mechanism that the open and agile smart cities uh, um, is, uh, is, is doing uh, to enable that services developed in one city can be then more easily used in, in, in other cities as well. So that was, uh, that was uh, uh, about uh, about Helsinki, and I think that they will be in a couple of months uh, uh, alive with what they are doing and be able to show it uh, more in practice uh, than, uh, than, than bullet points and screens. Uh, I look forward to that uh, next time we meet. Um, again, enabling proactive and personalized services, uh, promoting Helsinki's uh, 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 image uh, and enhancing interoperability. That's the city of Helsinki. And briefly, I want to touch on also on uh, uh, other cases. Uh, and I recommend the self data in the cities a playbook by, uh, 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 by Fing, uh, which is a French uh, think tank and, and, and who also have coordinated My Data France. Uh, there are good examples of, of, of work done uh, and work visioned in France uh, uh, relating to, uh, uh, to, to my data there. In practice, the, the uh, city of Lyon, uh, who has tried uh, uh, things uh, uh, a few, uh, for several years, a few different things. Uh, one interesting um, application now in the times of climate change is that, that how can you reduce the environmental footprint of our daily lives. Uh, and what they, they are doing is, is trying to gamify the use of energy, the use of water and the use of gas. Uh, and you can see some, uh, some screenshots here uh, and they are trying to incentivize people to uh, uh, save, save on, uh, on, on their consumption. And for example, providing monetary uh, reductions or the like, if you are able to save uh, 
save uh, um, um, energy, uh, water or gas. Um, so that, uh, that is an experiment I also hope to uh, uh, know more about uh, uh, later on this year and, and perhaps we see we see again or, or somebody from Lyon um, can, uh, can present what, uh, what they are doing. Other cities in France, uh, in, in Rochelle, uh, in Rennes, um, and Nantes, I believe, uh, um, are also working on this, uh, this uh, my data topic. So just, uh, just uh, um, I saw just the other day uh, uh, an interesting um, graph on the opportunities of, uh, of smart cities. Uh, and here, particularly, uh, uh, the areas uh, which I think resonate well with, uh, with my data. What are we trying to do? Trying to reduce travel time, reduce time spent interacting with healthcare and government, increase environmental uh, uh, quality, so decrease our, our footprint, for example, and increase our connectedness and, and, and civic participation. So we see very much opportunities. Uh, th these were just a couple of examples that, uh, that, I, that I showed. Uh, and I mentioned uh, open and agile smart cities. Uh, and I, uh, I know that Smart City Institute is also involved um, in this work. Uh, so open and agile smart cities is 150 city network uh, that is uh, uh, working to, to allow for the scalability of smart city solutions, developing standards, uh, for example. And right now, through this work that uh, Helsinki is doing, uh, Helsinki and the companies who are, who are working on, on the technical implementation are providing this, uh, uh, what is called MIM4 uh, standard on, on, on personal data management. Uh, and that hopefully is something that other cities plan to use as well uh, when they develop their, their smart city uh, solutions, meaning that, uh, that uh, uh, the solution development can, can, can be, be accelerated. Different solutions can be with relatively small effort be taken from one place to another. Finally, uh, uh, before we get to the fun part, uh, uh, the questions, uh, uh, just uh, wrapping up uh, by summarizing a few words about, um, about us. Uh, so again, uh, uh, My Data Global works worldwide. Uh, so very much looking forward to connecting regardless of where you are watching, uh, um, perhaps in Japan, perhaps elsewhere in the world. Uh, we look forward to connecting and working with you. Uh, I'd like to thank all the companies and other organizations who are uh, members, uh, in, in, including, of course, our, our, our Japanese partners. And for more information, um, we, of course, uh, encourage you to look at the mydata.org website. Uh, and, of course, if you uh, like what you are hearing uh, and you believe in this, uh, we encourage you to join My Data Global as an organization member or as an individual member. Uh, we have a slogan of saying, let's make it happen, let's make it right. Uh, and we mean here that, okay, we need to crunch to get things moving, but things at the same time need to be done the right way. Um, so let's make it happen and let's make it right. And with that, uh, uh, I'd like to thank you for, uh, for listening so far. Uh, and perhaps now we can uh, uh, um, start uh, discussing further on, on, on some of the questions. Okay, Tim, thank you for the excellent presentation. <clears throat> it's very clear uh, explanation of your activities. Thank you very much. And for the audiences, it's time to uh, ask questions, make comments to Tim. So we would like to welcome any comments from you guys. All right. <clears throat> and uh, until uh, we get uh, you know, input from the audiences, I would like to have some topics to talk about with you, Tim. And uh, let's, let's start from some easy stuff. So what's the, what, what was the motivation uh, to start these activities? 
you know, it, it's already nine, 10 years, uh, starting from the very early days of the uh, activities, maybe grassroots activities you started. Well, uh, many of the people who, who are in the My Data ecosystem kind of got inspired originally by the open data movement. Mm. Uh, 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 and with open data, we saw that there was, uh, you know, great possibilities to do very interesting things when government started publishing data uh, uh, openly. Uh, you could do all kinds of visualizations or get better understanding, better transparency. And then, then it, there was the question of, well, what about personal data? How can personal data, it's, it's not the same as open data, definitely not, but with, with uh, 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 how can we in similar way or uh, an analogical way, uh, how can we, we, we combine data in interesting ways to give benefits to the user as well as to the, to the service provider. Uh, and in fact, uh, uh, in 2014, um, uh, th th there was a report that uh, Open Knowledge Finland um, under which my data activities were taking place. Uh, in 2014, we did a report for the Finnish government uh, um, who was very, very interested in this. Uh, the Finnish government had very good experience with open data uh, and a good collaboration between government companies, academia, uh, and kind of act activists and nonprofits. Uh, and, and they were looking at, well, uh, um, is this something that we can, we can utilize also this my data thing? Can it help governments deliver better services uh, to citizens? Uh, or can my data bring new types of digital services to the market? Uh, and that was the, uh, that was the, the, uh, the start. Mm, I see. Thank you very much. And uh, how do you define my data activities? Uh, you mentioned it's a not-for-profit organization, but uh, you know, starting from uh, kind of a grassroots uh, activities inspired by open data activities, now you are evolving into my data, personal data uh, uh, front, and uh, it could be seen as an activist or can be a think tank or can be an NGO. Uh, you're bridging many things, but you know, what, what's the easy way to understand your activity? Uh, I think you are right. Uh, there are many ways to understand and there are many things we try to do. Uh, above all, it is uh, we, we help facilitate a network of companies uh, uh, and individuals who want to work on the topic. We bring together companies uh, uh, and, and, and organizations, individuals. We create knowledge together. It is not only my data global, uh, us who are working uh, on the staff who are bringing all this knowledge, but rather everybody who is working together. Mm. Uh, uh, it, is, it is much wider than, than, than only the staff. Uh, it is companies who are collaborating uh, to develop new projects. It is companies who are and organizations who are collaborating to write white papers. Uh, uh, it is companies and individuals collaborating who also try to influence policy sometimes. Uh, uh, and here it's, it's uh, very important that these hubs, I mentioned 30 hubs or chapters, uh, each of them acts a little bit differently. So maybe my day to Japan has a little bit different interest than my data Korea or my data Brussels, um, but they, in in all, it's about bringing the community together uh, uh, and connecting and developing best practice. Mm, I see. So probably it can be said that my data global is a global facilitator of the personal data ecosystem, consisted of a P public, private, and uh, community practitioners, something like that? I think you uh, summarized it very well. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> maybe, maybe we will use your, uh, your words. Uh, um, but yes, yes, that is a good summary, good, good summary of, uh, of what, what we do. Thank you. And the thing, I was also impressed with the idea of my data operator. You mentioned that it's somewhat similar to information bank practice in Japan. And the information bank, I think, yeah, resembles well with the concept of my data operator. 
And uh, both are in the midst of the growth. It's not the perfectly completed yet, I guess, but it's a kind of necessity for the database of uh, you know, the society. And uh, uh, the, you showed us the logos of the so-called My Data Operator. It's a wide range of organizations, it seems. And uh, who are the typical My Data Operators? Um, in the case of My uh, Information Bank in Japan, the financial institutions like a Trust Bank under my uh, background, Mitsubishi FJ, or the other uh, the financial conglomerate has uh, similar, uh, I mean, uh, information banks, uh, and also Fujitsu and some of the startups, the varies across the industries. And uh, the, the traditional utility companies may serve as uh, the operator or information bank because they are already serving as the uh, social infrastructure and the uh, source of the data as well. So what, what's the typical case in, in the case of my data operator? Thank you, thank you. That's a, that's a really, really good question. Um, I, I don't think there is yet um, one uh, uh, typical uh, um, way, way for the my data operators. Uh, maybe you remember I, did, I said these awards, uh, my, my data op operators uh, started uh, um, last year uh, uh, and these first 27, uh, they went through a process, not like an accreditation process, but more like a self-description process. So they, they defined what they do um, through this my data operator uh, uh, framework. Uh, and here there are quite many uh, relatively small companies, either small or, or kind of medium companies, um, mainly. Uh, some, of, some of those companies then work with, for example, cities uh, um, like uh, uh, my data share from Vastu, they work with Helsinki, Cozy, uh, from France, they work with some of the French cities uh, uh, and so on. Uh, some of the operators are generic uh, and then, then some are more uh, specific to, for example, health data or, or, or things, uh, things like that. Mm. Um, but I think what you mentioned about, um, about the utilities and, 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 and uh, uh, others is interesting because, uh, for example, in Finland, uh, the mail, the, uh, the Finnish mail, the Finnish post uh, uh, was, for example, looking at becoming a my data operator. Mm. Uh, um, and again, because it, 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 it naturally collects and disseminates uh, lots of information in many ways that would be a, a, a natural, natural role for them. Mm. So it's potential that, for example, they, they such uh, organizations could become operators. And then you mentioned finance. Uh, uh, and I think that in, in finance, there are many, many uh, operators who are very active. And I will just mention, for example, Octo in the, in the Netherlands. Uh, um, and in, in Netherlands, other, other organizations also, uh, Schluss uh, uh, from the Netherlands, uh, who are active in the, in the finance and banking sector. For example, when you apply for uh, loans from the bank, you are combining multiple types of data and perhaps giving it, uh, giving it to your bank for the, for the quote. Um, uh, so there are many different application areas. Uh, and I must say uh, uh, that uh, now in September, we have our next round of uh, uh, My Data Operator Awards. So if there are any companies uh, um, on this call who kind of identify that, yes, we are a my data uh, intermediary, um, please get in touch. Uh, um, we are just uh, opening on the 1st of September, a self-description round um, for my data operators. I see. So it looks like, uh, you know, many players are, you know, uh, entering into the uh, my data operator domain and keep evolving as uh, uh, from the different uh, functionality standpoint or the industry sector, sector standpoint. It's very interesting. It's like an evolution of the species, you know, which one can <laughs> evolve faster and stronger. And what's the fittest <laughs> to survive, mm. right? Mm. 
and these these I should say that these organizations in the community, and that is maybe maybe our neutral role uh, here, that we bring together some of these companies are competitors uh, uh, to each other, uh, mm. and 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 they still collaborate uh, um, on 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 making sure that there is some standard ways or common ways of working and, and, and how we can get the operators to be interoperable uh, and how can we make sure that there are rather, uh, uh, you know, 200 operators rather than two or three big ones that control everything uh, uh, that would perhaps not be the desired, desired state to be only a few, few giants. I see. Okay. Tim, by the way, would you uh, stop showing the screen uh, so that we can, our face will show up. <laughs> All right, that's better off. Perfect. And uh, I, I, will, I would like to keep talking about uh, da my data operator, which is, I think it's a focal point going forward, forward as well. And uh, in the case of Japan, you know, of course, you know, we have information bank as one possibilities. And the other uh, similarities is that the, uh, we talk about, um, data exchange layer within a uh, smart city context. So sources, data sources are, you know, uh, the sensors set on the uh, city assets like uh, roads and bridges and the cars and, uh, you know, the uh, sensor in many parts of the city. And also the data from corporations, data from open data. And uh, let's create a, you know, the kind of the data exchange layer. layer. Right, so using a open API technology, we don't need to create one central data storage, you know, big and uh, you know data lake or anything. Rather, you know, keep the data as they are in a separate space, but be able to uh, exchange as needed. Somewhat similar to uh, the uh, X road concept in uh, Estonia, right? Sure. Right, that's been discussed, uh, you know, well in Japan. When we see a lot of the, 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 the government documents, that's the basic line of logic. You know, rather than creating the, the data lake of any kind, you know, rather keep it separate, but uh, connected to the data exchange layer. Uh, sure. When it comes to the my data operator idea, what, which way are you heading to? Is a central data storage idea or the data exchange layer idea? Well, usually uh, the operator does not hold the data. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the role of the operator is to facilitate, uh, for example, the transport. Uh, uh, there are other things related to that uh, um, as well. Uh, but the data may, might stay in, uh, uh, you know, if you have a database of driving licenses or school records, the data stays there uh, uh, and the operator helps, uh, uh, you know, get that data from there to whatever is the data using service, for example, mm. uh, uh, the employment service, but the operator might not even see that data. Uh, it might only see the consent uh, and agree on the consent that yes, these two parties can, uh, can uh, 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 send the data to each other. Mm. Uh, uh, so it's not stored at the operator. It is stored either, either uh, and there are multiple ways and multiple technologies how, how the operators uh, uh, do it, uh, um, but uh, sometimes it is stored at the sources and sometimes uh, stored in your personal data store. Uh, 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 so I mean, in that, in that you have in your mobile or in your own vault, uh, so to speak, you might have that data that, that you then give consents uh, uh, um, uh, to move that data to other places. I see. So forget about the naming convention, but you call it the data exchange layer for my data operator. We are you know, sharing the same line of thinking. It's a data exchange rather than storage, basically. Y yeah, yeah, yes, yes, yes. The operator is, is, is mainly controlling, uh, controlling that, that uh, uh, and the um, uh, uh, and and for example the the uh, MIM four um, interoperability standard which which I must say I I, I definitely don't know well uh, um, is taking uh, uh, is specifying for example some of the, the the tech related to that and 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 some of the legal landscape related to that mm -hmm. uh, and similarly the my data uh, um, um, 
operator reference model, uh, the transport uh, or data exchange, as you as you call it, uh, um, if, if I if I understand that right, th that is the key part of that. There may be other functionalities on top of that, sure, uh, uh, value exchange and transparency uh, 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 logging and 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 so on. But that is a a, a key part, the data exchange. I see. And uh, as associated with the idea of the data exchange layer, or uh, well, whatever we call it, the interesting question is, can you trust the mechanism that your personal data wouldn't be misused by accident, by intention? Let's say we created uh, some kind of a data exchange layer, and the government is involved in it. And uh, mm -hmm. personal data is released through the, uh, the exchange layer. And the government is sitting in the middle and uh, data was used for primarily one reason but for some reasons the government stepped in and used for secondary reasons maybe you know uh kind of you know, police reasons policing reasons right and detecting the uh criminals and etc etc and then it's out of the consent and uh, can we trust that the, the information can be used for the only Predecided, uh, you know, uh, reasons, and that that's been, you know, sometimes raised up in the Japanese community. How, how about in in uh, my data community? Well, sure, sure, and and uh, I think a couple of things there. Uh, th that is why the the operators are required to say how they implement transparency and how they implement the logging mm. uh, 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 so that this can be, if something goes wrong, it can be traced back uh, uh, um, in principle. And, and, and you know, that is one way of, of implementing trust. Mm. Uh, and then also when operators work together, uh, that, that is why, why any, any, any group of operators or group of players has this common rule book uh, 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 in, which they, in which you agree how the data will be used and, and, and of course, in theory, there is uh, there is the option that uh, that, for example, a government entity or other entity would 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 misuse that, but that would then be a a, a breach breach of trust and breach of these uh, these contracts, and that's precisely what uh, what we try to get away from. It, it is a trusted network that you know that okay, it is for the good of everybody to comply with those uh, with those set of uh, agreements that 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 are in place. Yeah. I agree, and uh, it's in. I don't think this is the best anal analogy, but it's somewhat uh, similar to money laundering in finance, right? <laughs> Through the networks, you know, you know, sometimes you know, in the in the case of finance, the transmitted information is you know cut into you know, slices and dice and pieces, and then you know, separated and aggregated back again. So that the you know the the regulator cannot trace it any longer, and the uh, money is used for the uh, wrong purposes. So you know hopefully it it wouldn't happen in this uh, you know, data discussion we are talking of today. Sure, but uh, but I think it would be more like uh, uh, if I can use the finance analogy, more like different banks check the know your customer. You know, yeah. every, everybody validates that okay. Uh, and I trust that, okay, if I do business with uh, with the Japanese company, I can maybe trust that the Japanese company has done any checks that are needed. Uh, 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 I, I don't need to do it here from here from Finland. Uh, uh, so, I mean, I can trust the other parties that they are doing a good job of that and preventing any rogue uh, um, entities yeah. to doing doing banking. Um, I think that would maybe be, be, a, be a different way of, uh, of, of putting it. Right, thank you very much. And uh, let's move on to uh, comments, questions from the audiences. And the first one is the Jay Sharma. Sorry, I have four questions and I will come back to uh, uh, Vladimir's question because he re-raised the question after uh, Jay Sharma. So question number one, is simple term, in sim is simple term, what is the problem that smart cities are trying to solve? Uh, bracket, I understand my data expectations and approach. Uh, I don't know if you <laughs> have an answer to this, but uh, let me just shoot for it first because I'm the guy living in a smart city front, right? So mm -hmm. the, in essence, the, the 
uh, the United Nations is expecting that 70% of the world population will be living in cities, say Europe, you know, Asia, Africa, and elsewhere. That means all the social issues, urban, urbanization related issues, traffic jam, lack of the so social infrastructure, sanitation, medicine, everything occurs in the cities. And it's almost impossible to solve those problems without the technologies. That's why the many countries and cities are moving on to the smart technology to solve the issues. And uh, you know, the implementation of this uh, smart technology takes place in cities. That's why we call it the smart cities now. That's the simplest way of answering question. Um, and the, the, the type of questions or problems varies across uh, cities. In the case of Japan, the depopulation and aging is happening so rapidly. The Japan is the most rapidly aging society in the world. So if you look at the, 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 the rural areas, you know, we don't really have enough people to drive taxis, uh, buses, and the old people needs to go to hospitals and uh, you know, shopping uh, after, even after returning their driver's side licenses to the authorities. So we need you know, the automated driving cars or the Mars systems and something like that to support the elderly. So that's a typical case in Japan. And uh, you know, in COVID-19 situation, we'd like to have work from, work, work from home technologies, online work, online meeting technologies, and the cashless payment of, uh, technologies, digital signature technologies. So that you don't need to physically commute to the cities in the packed train. If you get on a packed train, stay there for one and a half, I'm sure you'll be infected. <laughs> so it, that's a health reason, social distance reasons, but that's a typical, very recent reasons we need the digital technology in cities. Uh, Tim, you have any addition to this kind of stuff? Uh, well, I see uh, Jay Sharma's uh, questions on the chat, and I think those are those are really good questions. Um, maybe I can just build and continue continue on that. Uh, um, so, so I mean, at the at the end of the day, it's uh, uh, again, I, I I I actually like the Helsinki vision very much. Uh, uh, most functional city in the world. Uh, to me, that is what the smart city is, is is trying to do, trying to improve the daily lives of citizens, and knowing that. Not every service, of course, is done by the city. Many of them will be done by private uh, uh, organizations. But anyway, that the city as, uh, uh, is, a, is an interesting and good place to, uh, uh, to live. Um, and, um, and you asked that, all right, uh, how can they work in the low trust uh, developing companies? And how can, how can we, we, we have the citizens included? Um, I think uh, interesting things, uh, are, for example, Mozilla uh, and the Open Data Institute have looked quite a lot at the different governance models, data trusts and, and, and others uh, to make sure that the data is governed and that, uh, the, that the, cities, uh, the citizens are involved in the kind of deciding how, uh, how, how that data, data is used like also on a collective level, not, not only on an uh, individual level. Uh, and you're right, uh, um, um, uh, we are talking here about uh, uh, high trust societies uh, and we are in fact trying to understand better. Uh, and if anybody is interested, I would encourage to join the community uh, to understand, well, how, how can my data implement, be implemented in Low, more low trust uh, uh, countries. Uh, and to be frank, uh, uh, we don't have the answer. I will never say that I know all the answers, definitely not. Uh, uh, and, 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 and like when I say that we trust in government, we trust in cities. Yes, that is true in, uh, in, 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 in Finland because I know there is accountability. I know that there are transparency requirements uh, that are quite heavy. Uh, and we know that, okay, uh, uh, it's not the same in every single place. Uh, um, so things need to be implemented in a slightly, uh, slightly different way. But again, if we uh, have people give consent, and if we have transparency to how our data is used, maybe that transparency is actually the, the, the first, uh, first step.
Um, but I, I, I understand that even transparency is very difficult to implement in some, uh, some contexts. Mm. Thank you, uh, Tim. That's a very important point. We, we, you cannot, you know, talk about issue of trust when we talk about the you know, data management. And uh, as you mentioned, the level of the trust to the government or technology or even to the business varies across countries. Uh, Japan is one of the lowest in terms of trust in many fronts. And uh, I, when I saw the data from the a consulting company, uh, Edelman, I was a little shocked. Well, Japan is a quality oriented country and uh, very much, uh, you know, uh, the, the, or the, you know, the treating customers well uh, from the heart. That's kind of our, uh, our attitude. But when it comes to the trust on data, <laughs> particularly to, to, the, to, the, to the government or technology, it's not really high. And the China is very high. And uh, so it's a little bit puzzling to me, but uh, you know, we tend to believe in the internal community members, but not outside. So that may that, be a good thing. Th that sounds uh, that sounds quite interesting. Uh, interesting, uh, uh, and I, I I am puzzled by uh, about what you are saying uh, <laughs> um, as well. Uh, so I would love to read uh, read that uh, that report if that is publicly uh, publicly available. Um, of course, I think all governments, uh, if it's cities or governments or companies, in terms of sharing uh, our personal data in this way, I think many organ uh, everywhere it, it is a little bit of an experimentation phase. Mm. Uh, and let's let's also admit that we are kind of early in the phase. Uh, and I see here some comments about trust and trust less. Uh, yes, that is, uh, um, of course, the discussion that that is being being used as well. Uh, and, and, you know, giving as little uh, data about ourselves, for example, uh, just the principles of data minimization as well, giving as little data as, as uh, uh, possible, but still whatever data is needed to acquire or do do some service uh, service well. Uh, and maybe you share more that when you do have the uh, do have the uh, um, um, trust, uh, and we talk uh, sure about um, also about trustworthiness. Maybe in some case that's a, that's a better better term uh, um, than, uh, than than trust. Mm -hmm. You're right. And uh, Tim, let's look at the question number three from Jay Sharma, and uh, it says uh, citizen centric citizen citizen inclusive governance model. He says in ongoing project management, but you know, let's forget about ongoing project management. Rather, talk about uh, you know what the, the, the citizen inclusive governance was, citizen centricity. What does it mean to us? Yeah, well, here I think uh, I think I mentioned the Open Data Institute and uh, uh, the Mozilla Foundation, uh, um, who, who have done and and many others. Who are doing these kind of experimentations and research on on the kind of data trusts and data cooperatives? That is it, is it that a set of people um, uh, elected uh, are on a kind of a transparency board or something like that, uh, um, or is it that everybody who participates in a cooperative has a, has a vote uh, um, on, on on issues? Um, I think there's multiple ways to to uh, uh, um, uh, to, to implement this, uh, this kind of citizen inclusivity. Um, I'm not sure, I'm not sure actually, uh, and it's a good question. I'm not sure how um, Leon and uh, Helsinki are doing it, uh, to be frank. Uh, um, I believe it's uh, mainly through, through um, uh, kind of, kind of more like your typical kind of uh, workshops in, in in developing the the solutions and and kind of uh, uh, normal transparency, not necessarily through through having the citizens involved in the decision making um, per se. Um, so I'm not sure I can provide a, a, a better answer to how, uh, how 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 for for example the the cases I mentioned mm. are doing it. Yeah, I, I, each time I see this kind of question, I remember, uh, you know, tragedy of commons type of ideas, right? Social dilemma mm -hmm. situation. And uh, as a way of solving the issues, 
you need to come up with a set of rules applicable to the society uh, and you know taking into account the history and culture of the society and uh, one interesting case we can discover in the world is the platform cooperativism uh, we can see that in European cities like in Milan or even in Latin America too so the cooperatism is one idea and uh, they extend their cooperative ideas to digital platform. And I don't know how it's gonna evolve, but it looks like a one type of solution. And uh, is that discussed in European context as well? Yeah, I think the cooperatives uh, uh, and all these governance models uh, um, are discussed and I'm, 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 I'm sorry that on, on the topic of governance, I'm, I'm not the go-to person person um uh, the um again again i think early phases uh, uh still uh and i believe that some of the um uh for example the data trust experiments uh were not necessarily always encouraging um so i think that there's a, there's a long way to go there uh, uh and, and 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 this topic of 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 governance uh um i think it was is one that there will be a a, a white paper written by the community, by the way. So if there is anybody um, mm. interested, it was put aside for uh, for some time, but uh, because of uh, COVID and other things, but the the uh, um, um, those interested, and that would be great. Okay. So let's move on to the next. And yeah, question. yeah. And, and as you Vladimir mentioning Poly Poly uh, um, as a data co-op, uh, uh, and there are there are others. Out of the operators, uh, um, the, uh, the Poly Poly, for example, is looking at the co-op model. Some others as well. Yeah, polypoly.com, data co-op from Germany. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I was just curious about the platform cooperativism. And, uh, you know, I try to read as much as possible, but haven't reached, uh, you know, uh, good model for Japanese society, but I see the possibilities. And everyone started to talk about, okay, back to the community sentiment, you know, big government is not a solution, big business is not necessarily a solution. The answer is always in the middle. Mm. Right? So in the human scale community where you can see how data can be handled. So human scale proximity is always uh, easy to understand solution to this kind of social dilemma. And uh, how you how do you formalize the idea uh, so that the, the personal data is securely used without uh, you know risk of having malintentional use is the uh, you know the, the kind of question we have to solve and uh, maybe everyone is experimenting just like Tim you mentioned. Mm. See? Uh, and 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 I will say I will say one more thing maybe on this uh, um, I see a question on the European. Uh, EU public data policies, and before we, we we stop, I definitely want to talk about that. But um, but we are right now very interested in also deepening and understanding more how things are being done in in Japan and the other Asian countries. Um, so if there are people uh, uh, um, interested in discussing about that more, I I, I also look forward to uh, forward to hearing from uh, from you uh, and learning. Mm. Right, thank you very much. And uh, Vladimir's question, I mean, this like city of Helsinki, can a Japanese city legally use a Finnish citizen public library profile data, anonymized, e.g. for access of a Japanese citizen to a copy of book made by Finn for private use, it's fair use case for copyright law <laughs> to complicate it to answer. Maybe next time we will invite uh, lawyers <laughs> or familiar with this issue. Um, sorry, I, I'm not well, really... uh, uh, well, I think uh, if I, I'm sorry for the interruption, uh, uh, if I can uh, uh, build on that, I think even uh, even in Finland, even in Europe, uh, um, the, the point is that, okay, can we use library data like what I have read? If I, if I read about uh, 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 sports, maybe I am interested in, in, in visiting, uh, uh, you know, Olympics venue when I, when I come, to a, come to a place. So, so can, 
can 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 my library data be be used to recommend me something something else? Uh, and I think that's legally difficult everywhere. It's legally difficult also in Finland. Uh, um, uh, of course, it's interesting to know if that would be legal legal in uh, in Japan. But I think both of uh, or neither one of us are uh, uh, lawyers. I think. <laughs> Yeah, but raising good points. Thank you very, very much, uh, uh, Vladimir, for asking this question. And I move on to uh, Kudo-san. Thank you for your great presentation. You mentioned about the trust with personal data, and cities are trusted. Why can you say that cities are trusted? Can you elaborate this a little bit, please? Uh, yes, and it was interesting that you that you mentioned that uh, that in Japan. Uh, which I'm very surprised uh, mm -hmm. uh, to hear that in in Japan uh, people do not trust the government. I think in uh, in, in in many studies uh, people do trust uh, uh, the cities and government more than, for example, uh, uh, big tech companies. Uh, and I don't have a citation there, I'm afraid. Uh, but this has come up in actually, we have done workshops with uh, with many cities, uh, kind of strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats. Uh, so SWOT workshops uh, and and this trust in, uh, uh, in 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 the city it comes up almost every time uh, at least in European cities uh, and again again it may be that we are talking uh, talking with uh, uh, with a particular subset uh, um, so that 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 is maybe not something that is uh, that is worldwide uh, but again there is a uh, uh, Relatively good transparency uh, um, in the in the cities, uh, and then then uh, uh, it, uh, ways of kind of complaining and finding out uh, sometimes feel feel almost better than than in terms of private companies. Mm. Yeah. So you know. So Tim, for your information, I refer to the search by a consulting company called Edelman. The Edelman Trust Barometer is- uh, uh, Right. Yeah, and the Japan is the lowest in terms of trust mm. level. Oh. Amongst the OECD countries and etc. So it's a little bit shocking news, but you know, maybe I have to trust it. And uh, yeah, right. So, you know, it's funny, uh, you know, the, 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 the level of the well-being or happiness is very low as compared to Finland. <laughs> the trust level is very low. So it may be because of the way of measurement, you know, how you measure affect the results. So if it's a you know, more Japan specific measurement system, the result may be different. But uh, you know, in a simple term, we may not be high trust country. And mm. uh, we have to solve this issue uh, to advance uh, the digital transformation in Japanese society as well. So, yeah, yeah, it's a humble you know, assessment of what we are. And the uh, next question is uh, sai a bit uh, abstract question. Are there any relationship with EU's public data policies? I think talking about the relationship between my data concept and the EU's public data policies. I think yes. EU are, yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, sorry, sorry, <laughs> interrupting you again. Uh, Yes, uh, so the Data Governance Act um, of the European Commission, uh, that was an act that was uh, proposed last November uh, and is now in, still in the rounds of negotiations between the countries. Uh, and that is highly relevant uh, to my data. Uh, so, so and, and in fact, we have uh, uh, um, been uh, giving our opinions to about the Data Governance Act to the Commission and to many many parties in the in the uh, uh, Europe Parliament uh, uh, and and kind of showing what uh, what the operators are and what the operators uh, think mm -hmm. uh, and it's really about um, uh, um, making sure uh, again that that um, uh, that these intermediaries as they call it uh, um, act in 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 accordance with the law. Uh, and it's not, um, uh, yeah, it's, it, it's, it's handling of public data, uh, uh, like you say, not necessarily storing public data and private data. It covers both, uh, both kind, of, uh, kind of open data and other public data, um, as well as then personal data. Uh, 
uh, but very interesting and we keep uh, keep an eye on that. Uh, and one thing that uh, you asked that how can we be sure, how can we be sure that nothing goes wrong? Uh, um, so first of all, it looks like the, the data intermediaries will have to um, inform uh, the data protection authorities that they are a data intermediary. Uh, so in that sense, the, then the data protection authorities can, can uh, uh, come and check if there is something, something going on uh, needed. Uh, and then I believe the EU is now considering uh, some kind of a certification uh, for these data, data uh, uh, intermediaries. Um, so something maybe a little bit uh, like the my data operator, but perhaps uh, perhaps uh, 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 it has a better kind of auditing scheme and, and so on. The my data operators right now are kind of a self description framework, not an auditing scheme. Uh, but the mm -hmm. European Commission is looking at uh, uh, doing some kind of a logo uh, for these data intermediaries, meaning that if you have the logo, then you can be uh, um, at least in some level um, trusted. Mm, okay, thank you very much. You know, I think we are uh, running out of time and the uh, rest of the people have just put the comments. So thank you very much for the uh, good comments and the reaction to what we have discussed. And uh, lastly, I would like to ask one question, which, you know, I'm amazed at, you know, the influence you brought about uh, to the cities and the governments and even to the regions or globally. So starting from somewhat, you know, activist type of activities, uh, you, you know, actually influence the decisions in the government uh, you know, the not the only the local level, but national and the regional level. What's the secret of influencing decision makers at that high level? Well, thank you. Thank you. Nice, uh, nice question. And thank you. I, 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 we are happy that we have been able to influence like you, like you say, uh, and, and still remember that we are the kind of network facilitator. And I think it's very much about, it's not us uh, uh, on the staff who have the knowledge, it's all those companies and all those people. Uh, and some of those people have been around for much, much longer, longer than, uh, that, than we have. Uh, so it's about bridging those people together. Uh, and then of course, being active under one voice to the European Commission or to the Finnish government or to the city of, 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 of Helsinki. But it is never done by one, uh, one uh, uh, individual or even a small group of individuals, but rather right now it's 2,500 people in the MyData community. It's 500 members in the MyData community. And that is uh, one key reason why, why I believe that, uh, that you should join uh, MyData is to make sure that our uh, capability to also influence the world for the better keeps on increasing and it's only increasing when we have more people uh, participating mm. so it, it's the power of network it I is say. the power of, it is the power of networks definitely okay thank you very much tim so i really enjoyed the discussion with you and thank you for uh, insightful presentation and uh, i think the message you conveyed to japanese audiences and also to globally Again, thank you very much, team. And uh, let's get back again and have a collaboration again. Thank you to everybody who was watching and thank you to the Smart City uh, uh, Institute, of course. It was a pleasure to, uh, to be here with you and uh, look forward to being in touch soon. All right, thank you. Now, kudos something, please. Yes, so team, thank you very much. And uh, I think we were very, very much inspired uh, with your presentation and discussion. So thank you very much again. And uh, let me just uh, quickly go through uh, our, you know, uh, programs. And again, thank you very much for viewing today. And after this uh, event, you will receive a, a questionnaire. So I would appreciate if you could answer them. And our programs of the webinars uh, will be available on Smart City Institute Japan's Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. And also they are posted on Smart City Institute Japan's website as well. And past videos, including today, uh, can be viewed on YouTube channel. And uh, today we had this My Data. And um, in September, we will have a, a guest speaker from Singapore. 
And also in October, we will have a fireware in Berlin and uh, we have more in the pipeline as well. And I will skip this uh, about Smart City Institute Japan, but uh, our global partner organizations, uh, the number is increasing. And today here we have My Data Global. So again, uh, thank you very much for viewing today and please have a nice day and we will see you soon. Thank you and bye-bye.